Today, we are looking at my experience shooting with the Fujifilm X-H2. Now, I was fortunate enough to borrow this camera from Fuji back in June when I took a family trip out to British Columbia, Canada. The trip was super fun because we also had a really cool rental car and we took that from Vancouver over to Vancouver Island, up to Whistler, and pretty much everywhere in between. The X-H2 was my main camera for that entire trip, plus the X100V that I always have as my travel go-to point-and-shoot camera, but really my main workhorse to shoot for the rental car and all of the amazing landscapes was the X-H2. Now, this is not going to be an overly technical or spec heavy video, but I will run through some specs just to give you a baseline of what this camera is capable of. Really what I want to talk about is my experience with this camera and how I feel shooting with it, and of course how I feel the final images turned out. So first up, the specs. Oh, and this is going to be a photo only review, even though this camera is arguably an amazing hybrid camera for both photo and video, I did not do any video with this camera on this trip, so I can only really speak to the photo capabilities of the camera. Okay, so the Fuji X-H2 is a 40 megapixel interchangeable crop sensor camera, and it has the Fuji X-Trans 5 sensor inside of it. With the X-Trans 5 sensor, you can of course use a number of different Fujifilm recipes or film emulations or simulations that are already built into this camera. Because I've owned the X100V for quite some time, time now, I've been able to figure out what film simulations I like best and tweak them to my liking and then just input that into the X-H2 and away I went. And if you're into video, this camera does do 4K60, which is absolutely a powerhouse feature for a camera like this. Again, I did not test out that feature because I have other cameras that do that, but if you're into video, just know that I can do that. Okay, enough specs, let's talk about my experience actually shooting with this camera on the go in three different different main locations around VC. Now first and foremost, the body of this camera is the exact body that I really want in a camera. It's large enough that it'll fit my entire hand around the grip without my hand cramping like it sometimes can do on the X100V, and it also supports an X-H2 specific battery grip that I would get if I owned this camera long term. The display on the top of the camera is super nice and really professional looking, but honestly I didn't find myself using it that much, I just found myself using the regular information display that was on the LCD or through the viewfinder. Now with the camera, I also did borrow two lenses and they are the 16 to 55 f 2.8 XF lens from Fuji and the 70 to 300 telephoto lens. For almost all of the car photos of the rental car that I had to shoot, I was on the 16 to 55 and for almost all of the landscape photos, I was trying out the 70 to 300 to see how it would perform in the mountaintops and mountain ranges of BC. Now in terms of overall image quality and image sharpness, it's incredible. It's 40 megapixels. The photos are tack sharp, especially with a really good lens like the 16 to 55 f 2.8. And I was not let down by that at all. Where I was slightly let down was with the fact that it's a crop sensor camera, whereas I'm used to shooting with a full frame camera and having much more latitude in the raw files in both the shadows and the highlights. Because it felt like I was shooting with a workhorse flagship camera, I kind of had more faith in the raw files than I would if I was shooting with a more point and shoot camera like the X100V where I would more so lean to the JPEGs. But honestly looking back now I would have spent more time dialing in my settings to make sure they were perfect so that I wasn't relying on the raw files in post production. Normally with my full frame cameras I'm able to boost up the shadows or bring back the highlights quite a bit and retain all that detail but I didn't find that there was that much information baked into the photos of these raw files files because of that crop sensor. Now, that being said though, I think for my style of photography, these photos are fantastic. A lot of my photos tend to be a bit more film-esque and a bit imperfect in a way, more natural looking, and so for that reason, I think this camera was fantastic, but if you're looking to use it for a much more commercial setting where everything is dialed in from your lighting to the scenario you're shooting in to the lens selection to everything, then maybe I would lean towards a Fuji option 
function that was full frame. I think the big kicker with this camera is that it is an ultimate hybrid camera, very similar to the Sony a7 IV. It's kind of in that same range, but it's, I believe, less expensive than the Sony. And to be honest, if you're like me and you love the Fuji colors and Fuji film simulations, then this camera might be the one for you. I found the autofocus to be super tack sharp and fast. I found the battery life to last all day long, even though we were in pretty chilly conditions up in the mountains. And overall, I just enjoyed shooting with a camera like this. So who is this camera for? If you're looking at this camera and you're wondering if this is the camera for you, I think you're probably someone who is most likely a pro amateur or just going into the pro realm of your photography career. You want a camera that looks good and feels good in the hands, that has a lot of selection for lenses to swap out and get the most range of focal lengths. You want a camera that has amazing video capabilities for clients that request video. And you want a camera that can produce really awesome colors like the Fuji's can. If this is you, then I would definitely suggest going for this camera. Now, if you think you're gonna shoot a lot more commercial level photos that you might benefit from having a full frame sensor and having much more information information in each photo, then I would also look at other options from Fuji that are full frame, or like I mentioned, a camera like the Sony a7 IV. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below for more videos on tech, business, life, cameras, and everything in between. Until next time, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.